much debate everywhere about who is the number one offensive tackle prospect. Coach Mack, I'll let you go first with your number one, and then Rhett, we'll see if you agree. I think it's Jedrick Wills. When you watch him play, Mike, he understands the nuances of playing tackle. And, and the, when you watch him play against the Southeastern Conference opponents, who are the guys he's going to be playing against, you know, because there's more Southeastern Conference players in the National Football League than from any other conference in the country. And you very rarely see him beat twice, you know, by the same move. I mean, he's a smart player. But look, 604 to 312 pounds, 83 and a half inch wingspan, ran 505. These are the physical skills that this guy has. He's got a 34 and a half inch vertical jump at the combine. I was very impressed with his movement. Uh, and to me, as a run blocker, he's got that lock on strength. He can generate movement. And plus what I like, when I'm watching offensive linemen play, I try to look and see if I can see definite signs of a real ugly temperament. He's got that. For me, it's Tristan Works from Iowa. This guy has the strength, the size, the power, but he's a football player, but he is a doggone athlete. You're talking about a guy that was a high school state champion in shot put, discus throw, was a wrestler. So he's got those physical, athletic, gifted skills in this, and he's played both left and right tackle at Iowa, which I think plays well to him in this next level of play. I think it's Tristan Works. Coach Mack, is Werfs the best offensive tackle prospect with the versatility and maybe to start his career at right tackle and eventually move to left? Or is there somebody else or some bodies that you like with that versatility? No, I think Werfs is that guy. I mean, and, and Rhett is 100% right because when you watch him at the combine, I mean, it was amazing to see his athleticism stand out. He's the only guy to have started on the offensive line as a freshman for Kirk Ferentz at Iowa. And we know what Iowa produces in offensive line. The other thing about Tristan Worfs, Mike, you move him into guard, he will be a all-pro guard from the minute he sits in there. Red Brian, who is the offensive tackle prospect that teams are most divided about that maybe has gotten hurt by the fact that he's not able to take visits and meet with teams? There's one guy that comes to mind, and it's Sadiq Charles from LSU. This guy is a really good athlete. He's a very good run blocker. His pass protection is good as well. He started as a guard inside and his first couple of years at LSU, moved to tackle in 2018, didn't have a great year, but really came on in 2019. But he was suspended for six games last year at LSU for some off-field stuff. So there's where the personal one-on-one -on -one interviews and asking and vetting part of it goes into this thing. Not so much what he can do on the football field, but a red flag off of it. If you were going to take an offensive tackle in this draft to potentially redshirt, who would that offensive tackle prospect be? You know, Ben Barch out of St. John's, Minnesota, clearly not high level of competition, but 605, 6, 309 pounds, 80 and a half inch wingspan. Ben Barch is a guy that you can see he's got some developmental skills. You get him in an NFL weight program, you get him on an NFL nutrition program. You've got a big man that has movement skills like he does. He dominated, you know, the division that he played in there, but you discount that. But you also look at his consistency in his play. But when you talk about a canvas that you can paint on the way you want it painted on, that's my guy. If I want to take a center in this draft, do I take LSU's Lloyd Cushenberry or Michigan's Cesar Ruiz? You're going to take Cesar Ruiz if you're going to go by those two guys right there. He would be first in this. I'm going to tell you why Lloyd Cushenberry might be that pick for other teams ahead of Ruiz. He is a, an extremely long arm guy. He has almost 35 inch long arms and has great leverage skills. He's not the biggest center at 6'3 and change and 320 some odd pounds, but he has a really good run blocker. He has good technical skills that need a little polishing, but he was a very good leader for that LSU team, which is one of those things that we always talk about as a intangible. Lloyd Cushenberry, might be a pick over Ruiz, but I think Coach Mack's going to make the case for Ruiz. At the combine, 6026, 307 pounds, 33 and, and one eighth arm, which is really good for a center. 11 hands, again, big mitts. You do everything with your hands initially. 
It's about hands and knee bend when you're playing offensive line. He can get those big mitts on people. He's got nearly an 80-inch wingspan, 79 and 5 eighths, 508 40, 40 yard dash. I mean, the guy can run, but more important than that, he's got a 177 10 yard split. He can get out and he can move at that size. 33 inch vertical jump, which which tells you the explosion he's got in his lower body. When I look at him, I think of a thick guy, very compactly built. He keeps his hands released and his knees bent on contact. He re-leverages his hands really quickly. I think he still needs has refinement both in his run and pass blocking. But to me, Cesar Ruiz is a guy that I would really like being in the center of my offense. It doesn't seem to be a, a great year for those top-level guards. But what other guard prospects stand out to you, guys who will be taken on day two and day three? John Simpson from Clemson is a third-round pick you know, that I would look at, that I have, you know, horizontally across there in that group. 6041, 321 pounds, you know, 5240. This guy can play. The other guy I like, Damian Lewis from LSU, third or fourth round player. All right. 6'2", 327 pounds, 524 in the 40. Those two guys, I like those guys quite a bit. Mm-hmm.